Welcome, welcome to Tech Doctor TV, another episode. It's been a while. Uh, I haven't had a lot of work that would warrant doing a video. I had one machine come in that wasn't sailing or anything, so I thought we could do a live diagnosis and fix it, but wouldn't you know it, I plugged it in and it turned on straight away. So that was no good. So what we've got today is this laptop here. Uh, it's an HP uh, Envy uh, X360, and the client has dropped it off because uh, if we spin it around, you can see that the screen has started to come away uh, from the backing. Uh, the hinge is busted internal here, so we need to replace this back section. Um, the screen itself is fine, so we've got to be uh, pretty careful here. I could see some pretty ugly flex going on down there. That's the hinge and the plastic thing. So on these screens, you've usually got like a plastic uh, bezel, if you like, that goes around the screen. Um, which then sits into the back shell. Now that is separating there as well because of that pressure. So what I'm going to try and do is separate the screen and you know pray that I don't crack it because I don't want to crack it because that's going to cost me money. Uh, these, these buggers are fragile so it's just going to be a matter of patience and um, being careful. So I'm going to have a peek inside uh, just see. I've lost my torch so I'll just use this just see if I can see if there's any adhesive. It doesn't look like it, because a lot of these have stuck down with a couple of strips of, strips of adhesive. So we might, we might be lucky and if we just work our way around. So I'm just using the old, well, I call it the guitar pick, but it's not. It's just the oddly shaped uh, tooly thing. And I've got my, this thing called the opening tool. It's metal, so you want to be careful because you don't want to scratch up the plastic, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and the old, good old uh, spudger. Go through these things pretty quickly because the edge, it does get burred uh, pretty easily, which is annoying, but it is what it is. So I'm just going to try and work my way around gently. See if I can... Oh, God, there's some flex on that screen, which I'm not happy about. Just, there we go. All right. So you can see, look at that. That's ugly. You ugly. Um, yeah, this is really, this is gonna be a pain in the bum hole. I'm just gonna see if I can get that hinge to bugger off out of the way because that will give us a little bit of breathing space get down you son of a bitch there we go all right so that's taken a bit of the stress off the screen so i'm going to have to reattach this bezel to the screen as well but my main concern at the moment is getting this screen separated so come on you little son of a bitch you can do it generally i'm when I'm doing something like this, I'm, I'm dealing with a screen that's already broken, so you, you know, you can be a little bit, um, not gung-ho, but you've got a little bit of leeway, because it doesn't matter if you, if you crack that screen again. So, oh, and hearing those cracking noises, I'm not having fun with this one, I can tell you. I'm really... I am quite concerned. Um, I'm going to try coming from the bottom because I've got another one just out of shot over there that does need a replacement screen. Uh, and I've got to say, it uh, it was easier to get the screen off. Now, what is holding this down? Uh, okay, so the cable's in the way. And they say, patience is a virtue. Well, whatever they say. I'm not overly impressed with it, with anything. I 
because normally you can, you know, if it's got adhesive, you can put a little bit of heat on it. But if there's no adhesive, kind of, you know, but is there back here? Because it kind of feels like there's something. Oh, you know what? Just give me two secs. I am going to get my torch because I want to see in there. RTO. Yeah, we'll be back. Now, let's see. Get my bloody. Get my finger under there. What do we reckon? I'm not really seeing anything. So I don't know if it's worthwhile, you know, applying any heat. But, oh, hang on, we've got some movement here. It's just when you've got to be so careful. So it's really just whatever you do not force it. You don't want to put any sort of unnecessary flex on this screen because they are so delicate and they're not the cheapest things in the world. But I feel like we're getting a bit of movement. So patience really is the key. And you're going to hear some noises that are going to freak you out. Okay. There we go. Oh, look at that. Wee. All right. Now. Okay, there's part of the busted magnet. Not magnet. Um, hinge. So... That's the casing that the lid came in, which is a whole other story. Now, we've got enough flex to get out. Oh, God almighty. Just sit there and don't be stupid. Um, right. Now. What have we got to take out of this? This, because we're putting a new, um, what do you call it? In um, I never know what to call this. The back screen. Um, uh, that's over there. I will grab it. This is him. Now, when they sent this, they didn't put it in very good packaging. It was just basically a plastic post pack, uh, which was really annoying. And when I got it there was a nice twist and dent around there uh, but I've managed managed to get that out so you know get the light shining on it and it looks oh I can't get it there we go yeah it looks pretty good uh, but the issue is going to be putting uh, these things on now, which is the part that's busted? How is that just, does that just? Okay, undo that, then it should just, should just plop out. Uh, I want my little Phillips, so we'll pop him down here for the minute. I'd like to take a photo in fact, I think I will, but I have to use a different camera. Right, yes, because my main phone, uh, and which is also my camera, is the camera shooting this. So I'm reverting back to uh, an old classic. Uh, you might remember the good old Nokia Lumia series. This was the, uh, the uh, I always think it's 1080, but that's not, that's, the, that's HD resolution. The, I think it might be the 1020, the Lumia 1020. And I always thought it was groovy because it was yellow. Uh, I actually won this in the early days of it um, being a thing, which was pretty. Uh, I was pretty stoked with that because they they worth they were worth quite a bit of money back then, uh, and they've still got one of the um, one of the better cameras I've seen, even though it's it's getting on in age now. Uh, it, it had one of the best nighttime shot 
cameras. Um, but being a Windows layout, it's a bit hard to find your way around sometimes. So let's just take a photo of how these cables are laid out because um, it may prove useful. I don't want the flash. I mean, it might be alright. Uh, yeah, I suppose that'll do. I've forgotten how the controls all work. Alright, so we want to take a close up of this area. Focus. And okay. Alright. Here we go. So these hinges, that's alright. So if we undo these, I think we we might actually be missing a screw, which is a bit annoying, but I'll uh I'll see what my spare parts have got if I need to get them. It's one of the fiddlier jobs having to replace the back panel because you know you've got all these you've got the camera, you've got the wiring. Um you know, it's really annoying. And they've got these pads which this replacement doesn't have, so I wonder if I'll have any luck getting them off. Because that could be good. Okay, so that's that. And the camera. Right. I'm going to try and uh, see if I can reuse this tape at all. That's still got some sticky, so we'll pop in there. And I'll try and have it so you can see it. I'm taking off the tape which is holding down the cables. I mean, some would say it doesn't really matter where the cables go. Uh, it may be true to a certain extent, but they are laid out that way for some sort of reason. I'm going to have to do the old man thing here and get the get the magnifying specs because the eyeballs are just being a little bit um, useless. That's easier. I can kind of see what's going on now. I can't see anything in the distance, of course. Okay, so that's those three. Now I wonder, I wonder if this, because these would be helpful. Let's see if I can get them to peel. Although I may have to use the heat gun to, to lift them, so I'll do that in a sec, I think. Now, take them out of the the channels. Well, I will, I will try to anyway. Let it go. So Oh, this is the um, right, right. Okay, this is the. That's interesting. The Wi-Fi antenna. These two little uh, gold things. You've got the wires coming down. That's coming from the the Wi-Fi module. So we're going to have to try and peel them up. without crinkling it too much. Here it comes. All right, you little bugger. Okay. Okay, so there's one little fella. 
in there. Once you sort of figure out what it is you're looking at, it's a bit easier. Okay, just getting myself a bit of slack here on this camera, uh, cable. Get, getting my merds waddled. Up and over. Up and at them. Come on. Just get over there. Get over it. Come on. I just need like half a mil slack. I'm going to have to go back back to front with this one. That's all right. We can do that, I think. I'm, now, I'm presuming this bronze colored tape is just that. I don't know if that's got any properties as such that would help because it looks like they're, it, they're attached to a little board and I think it's just a, a way of securing it down. Come on. Come on. Here it comes. Here you come. Come on. Leave it alone. Right. That's really sticky. All right. So now I can put dump put dump and that's, you know, it's fairly straightforward in its appearance of where it goes. Right, okay, that's there. So we've got them all coming out of the, um, it's my left, but if you're looking at it, it's the right hand uh, hinge. So all those cables all sort of route down there. So you want to pay attention to where they're coming from because, you know, you'll need to get them back in the right spot to, uh, close it back up without any sort of issue. Now this has got lots and lots of sticky. So just again, just carefully separate it from the sticky. Come on little spudger. Spudge. Spudge like you've never spudged before. Here we go. It's just working with this adhesive can be a bit of a, a bit of a pain. There we go. Now you want to undo. My cable along here. This is for the webcam uh, setup. So we want to be careful here because it's got two connections. Uh, now, how does that sit? Is that... This is particularly flimsy, so you want to be careful here. Just sort of run your spudger very gently along. Here's the little boy. All right, now, that goes out of there and then under there. Okay, so he's free and clear. You're free and clear. And now, ah, here we go, son of a bitch. All right, so we've got two screws here that <laughs> from the hinge, this is going to be a job for the needle nose pliers. Let's see if I can get that because the, the little mounts have actually broken free from the back of the case. Excuse me. So now it's a case of if I can get a, a grip on it. Come on, man. Angle him up. I don't know. This could be... This could
could be one of those frustrating moments. If this goes on too long, I might have to edit it, but we will see. Have I got him? Have I got him? There we go. Got him. All right, so we are. Oh, here he is. Here's the missing one. He was just sitting on the back of the screen. Oh, happy days. Now, let's not drop him. Let's try and get some of this plastic away. Like that. So I can get a, uh, a better grip with the pliers. Motherfucker. Oops. <laughs> I told you that it would happen. And that's... Uh, well, it's pretty common for in here, really. Just ask the dogs, I'll tell you. Honestly... Such teeny tiny little bloody screws. All right, now you hold tight there, son. Gotcha. All right, that's two. Oh, I don't need you, so you can stay down there till next time I vacuum, and then I'll hear a rattle and wonder what it was. This one is going to be a bit more of a problem. I have to clear some of that plastic. All right, I think we've got some clearance. It's really not a lot to get a hold of here. Come on, man. Okay, that just fell out of the hinge. I guess that makes my life a bit easier. Okay. All right, so that's all the screws present and accounted for. So we'll get all of this rubbish, get it out of the way. Clean desk is a happy desk or something. Just want to make sure before I proceed. This is supposedly for this model. It looks ever so slightly off, which I'm, I suppose, a little bit worried about. But I guess we'll just have to wait and see, won't we? The hinges don't even line up. <sighs> All right, well, I'm going to cut it here. And then I'll have to come back to it when I've got the correct part because this is a pile of bullshit. So welcome back to Tech Doctor TV after that unexpected break because I had the wrong LCD lid. Um, they had sent us one which was almost identical, but there were some the tiniest differences in the sense that there was like half a mil maybe difference between the opening here and the other one, and it just wouldn't fit. So after a bit of swearing and carrying on, um, I now have the correct one here. Uh, and this one was sent much better packed, uh, so better supply. It's got a protective thing on the front and it, was ca it came in a rigid cardboard box, which makes all the difference. You know, you're not gonna get damaged. And it's got those pads and all of the uh, bits of uh, like tape. So it's great, well, it's plastic and it's got designed to sort of hold those cables in place. Uh, so now, is the task of reassembling so we can get rid of that old one because um, that's dog poo now and let's see if this is going to be cooperative just got to line him up and line those hinges up the first thing I'm going to do obviously is attach the screws to the hinge so we can get an actual lid in play. So here are some screws I prepared earlier. Hello. I'm gonna have to come and try and 
be in shot and try and uh, get these screws to pull this hinge down because I can't quite get it flush but I think this should be fine it'll just pull the lid up a little and align those hinges so I'm going to do one, one screw per side to begin with because there will be some aligning that needs to happen just to make sure it's all tickety-boo all right that's looking all right the most annoying part is going to be rerouting those cables I mean it's not difficult but it's just it's fiddly uh, so advice is uh, make sure your screen is functioning before you go and secure everything uh, I mean this pretty much uh, there's no there's no adhesive tape holding this LCD in this purely a click in which is which is good uh, but as you saw from the first part, it is a bit nerve-wracking getting it out, particularly if your screen is intact. Um, and when I first took the back off, uh, the screen just wasn't coming on. I don't know what was going on there, but it just uh, was... The machine was firing up and I could connect an external monitor. Uh, so I uh, just sort of rejigged these connections back here and then it, uh, it came to. But I'd say throughout throughout the process while you're doing this, just double check that screen's working because you don't want to put it back together and then find that it's not working and then have to put the bloody thing, you know, pull it all out again. So there's all my bits. So I'm gonna just flip my screen up. There we go. It's working. It's looking for me with the camera, which yeah, it's not gonna find me because A, it's not my laptop, it's a client's and I'm not registered. Uh, so, now, these little bastards. Is one longer than the other? Yes, so that's good. That gives me an indication of, um, you know, the longer one, you know, being the right one and what have you. So I'm going to put these in place. Um, I'm actually going to refer to that old photo. This thing's still got power. Of course, it bloody hasn't. Ah, oh, piece of shit. Because I just want to make sure that I align this correctly. Uh, ow. Caught my leg on the old... Ow, shit. <laughs> yeah, just watch out for that camera strip. It gets hot. <laughs> so, we've got a figure out the uh, alignment for this. That looks... Oh, that's really hot. Stop it. Stop burning me. So, uh, we may... Uh, maybe we'll power the machine down. If we were to just stop trying to find me. Let's see if I can log in a different way. Get it to turn off because it's being, there we go. All right, happy? Just get that camera to, to turn off and just sort of map out these, these uh, where the uh, cable's gonna go. Because the thing is we've got to clip them in as well and uh, you know, it's, honestly, it's a pain. You cool down? Yeah, you're a bit, bit cool with a bit of touch now. Get off. I'll edit this bit out. It's going to charge this phone up a little bit. <coughs> All right, back again, uh, just with the camera, so I'm not cutting the head off the whole time. Uh, I've just got the other camera uh, on charge, but I think I've got it sussed out where this camera needs to go, so it's just a matter of routing in these, uh, these little cables, uh, and then 
sticking the buggers down. Uh, so it's a little bit fiddly. Um, just sort of tucking them, tucking them in to the bits and bobs, you know, the little uh, retention clip areas. Uh, there we go. So he goes under there. And once again, Mr. Spudge comes into play. And again, I'll just be dry fitting the case, uh, the the screen back in, uh, because I don't want the camera to be misaligned and then, you know, clipping it all back in and then realizing that I hadn't got it fully aligned, because that would be super annoying. And I dare say I would swear. Uh, so get him. In here, I tell you, these bloody so this is for the WLAN, the uh, wireless. So that's Mr. Lefty. Now, does that run along there? I'm going to put these in and then I'm going to double check with that photo when that has a little bit of charge and I'll I'll stick these things down as well. Okay, so that goes along there. So that's good. These things are good. These plastic things, they're very good. Um, so I'll peel the backing off. I will do that for these because I believe they'll be fine. Just got the cable in the, there's like a little, there's guides as to where to put the cables. So you run them under there, and then you can put this adhesive that they put the, the plastic uh, flappy bits, and that just holds it in place. And I've got a little bit of slack on the cable just in case I need to move it up at all. There we go. So that should be fine. You're beeping that phone. Here's the other one. No, they don't. These don't clip in as such, they just stick. In fact, that one is going to go up a little bit higher. There we go. Right. May have to use a bit of tape on that to hold him in place. We'll see how he goes. Because the problem with these is they curl once you un unclipperate them. So we'll get him under there. And that will feed into this little channel here. So all these little channels you know, you want to put them in the right place because, you know, you don't want them being interfered with or, you know, any of that rubbish. Because, you know, these things are quite susceptible. Uh, like, you just get one thing not quite right and it's like, no, I don't want to be your friend anymore. Is that going to clip under there? Yes, it will. What I wouldn't give for my 20 year old eyes again. They were uh, far easier to see out of. These ones just, it's the up close that, uh, and fiddly that gets really annoying. Like this. Come on you. Oh, so if you sit there and then we'll feed you back down through here. Almost need some of those scientific zoom goggles. Because, you know, black cable on black uh, plastic with black clips. You know, what could, what could go wrong with that? Nothing.
Is that another clip there? As I said, this this is by far is the uh, the most painful part. Just getting these things in these bloody things. Okay, you go in there. You go there. And where do you go? I don't know, I don't think that's quite right. I have to refer to that picture, so I'll just wait. It's not going under there. All right. Now this I'll have to use some adhesive for. Um, as for the webcam ribbon cable, now has it been? Yeah, that's got a bloody twist in it. All right, lovely. There we go. Just get any twists out of the cable because you know it may inadvertently happen when you're uh, taking it in and out. There is somewhat of a guide here for the camera, but it's. Yeah, it's a little bit, you know, not quite right. But we'll put them there and we'll see. So that's sitting there nicely. All right, so just for the time being, let's get this and flippity doodah him over, put him in place. Well, those little, those things are centered on the camera. So that's, uh, that's good. Front one, da da. Now, let's look up the camera. Camera! Yep, that's... Uh, that's perfect, I think. There's a slight shadow there, and I'm not sure if that's the... Yeah, that, that might just be the alignment. Yeah, so we're about 99% aligned. Um, so yeah, that's gonna be the challenge. All right, beautiful, all right, that's looking good. Um, Okay, so the screen is, is dry fit and you can't really see from them and I, well, I'll, I'll get out of the camera. It's a bit hard when it's in that position. So, I think you can see that the screen's on uh, and the touch touch is still goody good. What I would like to do, um, it'll be awkward, but we'll see if we can do it. We can fold the bugger over on itself. Because that way I can get a clear view of these. Don't flip upside down. Cute. Now I can have a look at this bottom section and check the alignment of those cables. Because, you know, for all I know, they may actually be right. Because everything's stuck in place. Uh, it was just those, the um, down the channels, down the bottom, and that was for the uh, the right hand uh, wireless antenna. Oh, yes, it's got protective tape on the uh, on the little chrome edging, and it just tore as I was taking it off. Nice. All right. Get off me, man. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's not quite gonna clip in down there, so I will have to double check that. I mean, not to say that this chassis isn't warped at all. Uh, 
because I don't know how this damage occurred. Like if you've got, you've got a hinge that's busted off, it's very likely that you're going to get a little bit of warping in the actual hinge. And one of them did look a little bit dodgy. So we're sort of doing what we, working with what we can here. Uh, but yeah, I'm just going to see if that thing's got enough charge. Be one sec. All right. So we've got a visual thing now. Get that bloody chair out of the way. Need to lift this so he can be. Right, so this one needs to, right. So I just need to reroute this cable a bit because it's, it's sitting not quite right. The others look pretty much, pretty much right uh, looking, at, looking at them. So yeah, this one's the uh, this one's the bugger. I see where he's got to go. There's a little uh, angle, like an elbow, an elbow bow. I've just got to try and flick the little bastard under here. It would be really good if I had... There we go. There's a tiny little channel. Got him. You've got to flick him into that channel, otherwise you're, you're not going to... Um, you're not going to get the proper closure on the case, because you've got, you know, those cables are sitting uh, outside of those channels, I'll get in the way of the clips, and then you might get a, you know, a, a ninety percent closure on the case. Um, but you'll always have that one little spot that just won't sit, and you don't, you don't want that. I mean, especially, especially for a client machine, you want to give it back to them uh, as good as new, or as you know, at the very least, better than what they gave it to you. If there's Existing damage, well, there's not much you can do about that. <laughs> like if that, um, if this hinge is twisted at all. But by getting these cables in place, you really uh, doing yourself, as Molly Meldrum would say, doing yourself a favour. Now, there's some channeling up here for the top of the cable, so I'll use that. It's like un, uh, over, under, over type thing. So you, you, you're feeding it through. So it's sort of just like a self-retention type thing. I don't know if this is making any sense. You get in there. There you go. All right, so he's in place. And now it would be a case of... Flipping him under there, under that plastic. Take the protection off. All right, so that's that's that stuck in place. That's that. Uh, now, as I said, the camera looked pretty good. Um, there's no. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? There's no adhesive on the, on the back of the panel here. Here's on the old one. Um, you can see down there there is a, a bit of adhesive, so I'm going to going to grab some, which I had like a minute ago. 
and I moved it because I had to get something. There it is, all the way over the other side of the office. And I keep standing on stuff and sticking to my feet. I've had a lot of stuff going on in the last couple of days, so the office is a mess. And I mean, I'm trying to keep it, try to keep it uh, neat, but you know, there's only so much you can do. So this stuff, it's uh, it's great. It's like uh, you can get it in different in different widths. I got uh, I got this one. I think it's the uh, it's five millimeter. Um, that just seems to be the most. We'll call it like a universal um, size. For like it's good adhesive for a lot of things like you know from working with uh, in laptops of course. And you can get much finer stuff like one millimeter stuff which you can uh, use for phones. Uh, so we'll stick that down there. Get out of the way. Okay, so we've got him on there. And I've also got the, uh, the same brand uh, glue which I'm going to be using because uh, as I said before the screen is separating from the the plastic uh, bezel which you know isn't great but a little bit of glue will hopefully sort that all right so now he is secured in place so everything looks pretty pretty good to me I'm uh, pretty pleased with that uh, it's, it's awkward but you know that's just that's just the way it is none of these clips appear to be broken so I'll just double check these hinge screws don't over tighten whatever you do because uh, you know you don't want to bust those mounts again give it you know as far as torque I mean I don't know what torque settings but just so you just can't easily, you know, once you've got resistance, just a tiny little turn, uh, so you're not overstressing it because you don't want to break a thing like because then you're back to square one. Um, right, so I'm going to bring the camera over if I can get it over a little bit and not drop the phone. So you can see, I hope, um, that the cables are, are sort of nice and you know, they're routed along, everything's stuck in place. Uh, and so I'm just going to double check the camera again on another dry fit because I do not want to discover that the camera is misaligned. Yeah, you can see here on the bottom that's coming off and I'm going to do that at the end. It's a bit painful. So we'll clip that in and now we'll go back into camera. Waiting. Okay, so I'm just going around carefully clipping the screen in. Because I'm pretty happy with that cabling that it's, you know, it's sufficient. Um, the bottom being generally the, the biggest part, but because we've got those cables in the right place, happy days, it's all going in. But yeah, there is definitely a bit of a warp going. Tiniest little warp. I may not need to use that glue. We're gonna have a look, so. Flipping the screen back. Flip, it, flip the bugger over. Ow! Pinched my hand between the hinge. That wasn't a lot of fun, I can assure you. And just make sure that that hinge, not the hinge, the, uh, all the bezel is all clipped in nicely. And give it a visual inspection. That looks good. That looks good. 
and we've got some nice movement going on and we don't have any uh, any wobbly loosey goosey oh yes we do all right so I'm going to glue this because it is being a bit of a turd all right so now I just got to get the right position so we'll just make sure that that's clipped in nicely appears to be yeah the screen sort of pops in so I think if I just run a couple of just a little bit along the side there that'll just uh, that'll just help it to, to go in place so you want to be careful so this is the, the same stuff this is um, uh, B7000 uh, and it's a good it's, it's very very tacky um, it's not like Super Glue was specifically designed for this plastic stuff because you don't want to be buggering around with uh, aryl diode or any of that rubbish so this stuff is good and it's got a little uh, pin which keeps the nozzle you see you can see the nozzle is uh, can you see that it's like a super fine needle uh, so that allows you to get into some some you know some tricky places so I'm going to just test it test the flow on some paper <laughs> Oh. All right, it's not a lot, but I'll just if I can find it. Oh, fuck me. Fuck yeah. All right, so I'm just going to put a little, a little bit of, that's not really giving me anything, is it? Yeah, no, I won't use that. That's just not going to do anything. So I just need a little bit of pressure on that just for, just for a short time. I just want to secure that corner because that's where it's mainly lifting. Uh, if the glue was working adequately, 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 uh, that would make my life a lot easier. And now the fucking needle stuck to the counter. Got him. Right. Put that back afterwards. Yeah, just, just going to move him and I just want to find something with a little bit of weight to put on there. Anything will do. There we go, look, some old school spool of DVDs and whatnot. All right, so I'm just going to leave that there for a minute. That should be good. So all in all, we've we've uh, we've had a, su a successful transplant. Excuse me. Um, the uh, the biggest thing you've got to worry about is, is rerouting those cables because if you don't, you're going to have all sorts of issues, particularly along this bottom edge. Uh, and if this is a it's a flip, like a, this is a like a two in one or a flip book or what do you want to call them. Um, once you flip it, uh, you're going to see if there's a if there's a gap there, and that's. Um, it's going to be frustrating and, and I don't think your client's going to be happy. So you really want to get those, those things in there correctly. Um, so while I'm doing this, I'll just have a look. So the Wi-Fi is still functioning. So check the things that you've messed with. Uh, 5G, uh, 5 gigahertz connection, full signal. Uh, we are all good there. Camera, there's no interference uh, around the edges. So it's been, it's been uh, aligned correctly. Um, doesn't take long to to get a get it to that glue to take. 
and that looks like that is now sitting where it's supposed to, uh, which is wonderful. And also check the touch functionality. So um, as you can see, touch is working, happy days, close him. It's all nice and uh, aligned. So screen's gone to sleep. And actually the whole machine's gone to sleep now because it's unplugged. There we go. Turn it back on. Happy days. So now I'm just going to give it a little bit of a clean. Um, just clean that screen because it's a bit, after handling it, it's a bit grubby. So I've got my screen cleaner somewhere. Oh. Not there. So this is the problem with having a small workshop, you know, things do get a bit disorganized and cramped. But, you know, it's not what you can do in the short term. I know I'm moving and there it is. See, I thought I'll put these in the cupboard. I won't forget where they are then. And what did I do? I forgot where they were. All right, so just give this a little, a little clean. Just to get the grubbiness off so it looks like it's nice and new. You know, we want to, as I said, you want to give it back looking as good as new or at the very least, you know, better than when you first received it. Touchscreens go on spastic when I do this. But it doesn't matter, it's fine. There we go, that's looking, that's looking nice. Now, clients also asked me to give it a look over because it's uh, it's pretty slow. I gave her a, um, a loaner machine, which was like a lowly, uh, I think it might have been maybe a Pentium. Um, and uh, it's, you know, it's as slow as a wet whistle. Don't even understand that saying, wet whistle. Um, how's that slow? But anyway, um, I thought it was going to be a little bit of a, you know, pain for her to use, but she said that it's a thousand times faster than this one, which strikes me as odd because even though this is like, uh, it's only an A, I think it's a, I think it's an A9. So it's essentially, a, I'm pretty sure this is a dual core, you know, with the, with the compute core, uh, compute cores and the graphics cores as they describe them. Um, it's not the most powerful machine. I didn't realize they made these uh, X360s in the lower spec um, CPUs like that, but apparently they do. Let's just check the specs. I mean, I can see that it's got McAfee uh, and Norton. So they're probably gonna be slowing it down, but it's not, I don't think it's the paid version of Norton. I mean, I, I don't like to remove people's, I won't remove people's paid subscriptions. I'll advise them that don't renew it because I think Norton is, is a massive resource hog and I don't like it. Uh, and it's just pop up after pop up, uh, pop up after pop up. And it's really frustrating. You're trying to do stuff and it's just like, you know, this, that, everything else, you know, blah, blah, pay attention to me. And McAfee, well, that's just horrible software. Yes, yeah, so here we go. A9 uh, with five compute cores, two cores plus 3G. So 3G, um, the, just the 3G standing for three graphical cores. Um, so essentially you've got a dual, dual core CPU, which is not, not brilliant. Uh, 8 gig of RAM, which is, you know, it's passable these days. Uh, so I'm just going to go in and just remove some of these unnecessary bits of software because uh, I, don't, I don't believe that they're necessary. Windows security is more than adequate in, um, in, in, uh, in Windows 10 or 11 because, you know, it does a good job. It really does. Uh, and it, uh, it doesn't nag you, doesn't hassle you. It's not a pain in the ass. So, but uh, these ones that are bundled, most people, general users don't, don't know to re-uninstall these things like McAfee Safe Connect. I mean, you know, I don't think that anyone, I've never seen anyone actually use it. However, always check. 
because you go, you're going to find that one time you don't check that they've actually used it. So we'll just double check it. But anyway, I'm not going to bore you with uh, going on like this. Um, the purpose of this video was to, to show that uh, screen swapping out. Um, and that's all looking good. So now we can just take off this back cover. Ta-da! And she is done, which is wonderful. I'm very happy with it. Uh, the client will be happy with it because it's back to a usable state, which is wonderful. And uh, I'm annoyed at the glue. That's another story. But that will uh, that will do us for now. So I, uh, I appreciate you tuning in, and uh, I apologise if I ramble on. I tend to do that when I'm working on a machine, and I might get a, some weird trains of thought. But anyway, I hope it was helpful. Um, in the future, I would like to get a second camera so I can go overhead so you can see exactly what I'm doing. But I've just got to work with what I've got at the moment until I get some uh, maybe get some generous sponsors that want to give me a camera, um, or you know I can do it the old-fashioned way and save up some money and buy one. Because uh, that secondary one I have over there is alright for snaps, but it's not good for videos. So here we are at the end of another one. Uh, hopefully it won't be too long before the next video. I can only put up videos on, on jobs that I get because most of my jobs is, uh, is remote management. Uh, so that's, that's not going to be uh, you know, exciting viewing. So any repairs like this or anything like that, uh, new builds that I get through, uh, I'll, I'll do. Uh, live troubleshoot, um, that kind of stuff, but whatever. So yeah, thanks for joining in, uh, thanks for watching, and if you want to subscribe, that'll be ace. Uh, make a comment, uh, I'll do my best to re reply to it. But in the meantime, take it easy, and I'll see you next time. Tech Doctor TV out.